Sheikh Jili is the fool in Indian stories. And one day he found himself in the forest looking for firewood. So he climbed up a tree, found a thick branch, and would you believe it, Sheikh Jili? Sheikh Jili started hacking away at the branch he was sitting on. Hacking away at the branch that was supporting him. Well, a little while later, a guy from the local village looked up. He looked up as his debris was falling down on his head. And there, perched precariously, maybe 20 feet from the ground, was Sheikh Jili hacking away at the very branch that was supporting him. Sheikh Jili, Eki Karda, what are you doing? He says, you're going to fall down and you're going to hurt yourself. And Sheikh Jili looked down and said, Le, tu rabba? Are you a god? Can you tell what's going to happen in a man's future, huh? Just mind your own business. Go about your, go about your way. And the guy says, you're going to fall down and break your head. You're going to hurt yourself. He goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go on. Go about your business. And off the guy went. Well, you know what happened a second later. There was a karash. Down came the branch. And who was with it? Sheikh Jili. And Sheikh Jili wasn't concerned about his aching ribs or his bruised ankle. Sheikh Jili thought, he really is a god. He said I was going to fall down and hurt myself. And by Jove, he was right. Friend, friend, stop. And he caught up with him. Durabana, na? Durabba. You really are a god. And the guy was saying, no, I'm a normal guy. I'm just like you. No, no, you are a god. You predicted what was going to happen. You're a god. And the guy thought a two-year-old could have predicted that. He says, no, tell me. I want to know one thing. I want to know one thing. When am I going to die? And the guy said, I don't know why, when you're going to die. That's too, too big a responsibility for me. I don't know. No, tell me. When am I going to die? 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 When am I going to To get rid of him, the guy said, on the eighth day. And off he went. Oof, that was close. And Sheikh Jili went home and he said to his wife, wife, make me some food. And she said, well, how many rotis do you want? Pieces of bread today. He said, about four foot. She said, oh, you must be hungry if you're measuring food now in distance. He says, yeah, four foot. So she made a huge pile of roti. She made him his favourite curry, which was chickpea with potatoes. She also made him some lamb curry and she also made him some vegetable curry with aloo gobi. And she made him a big pot of yoghurt. And he took all this beautiful food, dug himself a grave in the graveyard, lowered the food down and sat there crossing his legs, eating, eating his food. Thinking, if I'm going to die, I might as well go with a full stomach. Well, days passed and after some time, Sheikh Jili the fool genuinely believed that he had died. And that's how it would have remained. Until one evening in the dead of night, as he was in his grave, he heard voices. And it was the butter sellers, husband and wife. And the wife was there complaining, saying, oh my goodness, me, my neck is killing me. We've been carrying this for hours. If somebody would just carry this pot, this pot of butter, I would give them one rupee. And suddenly a voice from the way down below said, if I was alive, I'd carry that butter for you. Who's that? It's me, Sheikh Jilly. What are you doing down here? What are you doing down there in the grave? Well, I'm dead, aren't I? It's obvious. You're not dead, you fool. Can you see me? Yes. Can you touch me? And touched her hand. Yes, I can feel you. Then how the hell can you be dead, you idiot? And husband and wife dragged him out. And Sheikh Jilly felt his body, felt his face. That's not a holy man, he said. That's not a holy man. He says, I'm still alive. What was he talking about? He's not God. He says, but I will carry that pot for you for a rupee. Done, she said. And she placed the pot on his head and rubbed her own aching neck and shoulders. And Sheikh Jilly followed the couple through the village. And now he started dreaming. He started dreaming big dreams. One rupee. One rupee. I can buy some chickens with one rupee. I always wanted to be a chicken farmer. And with the money I've got from the chickens and the eggs, I'll buy myself a goat. You know, goat's good. It gives milk. And people also weave the hair to make things. And then from the money from the goat, I think I'll buy myself a cow. A good cow. The biggest cow that this part of India has ever seen. And the milk I'll sell to the jawala, to the halvai who makes the sweets. I'll be so rich. I'll be loaded. And then from the money from that, I think I'll buy myself a camel. And you know, maybe I'll take it to Rajasthan and maybe we'll join in with the camel races. And it'll be the mightiest camel, the fastest camel that we have ever seen. The Rajasthanis will love it. And from the winnings from my prize, the prize money that I get, I'll buy myself an elephant. An elephant that is so big, I'll say to the king, Your Majesty, look at my elephant. Isn't it bigger than yours? And the king will say, It certainly is. I'll tell you what. Do you fancy marrying my daughter? And I said, I don't mind if I do. And I'll marry the princess. And me and the princess, oh, we'll be together all the time. We'll be kissing and whispering sweet nothings and ooh, twiddling each other's noses. Life will be blissful. And we're going to have eight children. Four boys and four girls. And if they're girls, I'm going to call Arena, Bina, Tina and Sabrina. Oh, it's going to be fantastic. And then they're going to have children. And I'll be in the palace. And then I'll be an old granddad. And my grandchildren will be there. 
and I'll be bubbling away at my hookah, bubbling away at my hookah, and one of the grandkids can say, Babaji, Babaji, grandfather, come and play with us. And I'll look down and I'll see the snot going down from each nostril like a number 11. I'll say, no, I'm smoking my hookah. No, Babaji, please play with me. No, leave me alone. Babaji, please, two minutes, play with me. No, can't you see I'm smoking? Babaji, please. Ah, get out of here, you little bugger. And as soon as he said that, the pot of butter crashed down to the ground and disappeared. And the wife and the husband said, you idiot, you fool, what have you done? You've lost all our butter. You've lost all our butter. You really are an idiot. He says, butter? You talk about butter? I've lost my wife, my grandchildren, and the whole palace. She talks about butter, huh? What kind of world do we live in where dairy products are more valuable than human beings, huh? <laughs> and poor Sheikh Chili, he never did become rich. He remained the fool that he was. And that's how he remains to this very day.